Hello everyone, welcome back to Smith's Garage. In this episode, I'm gonna go over exactly what engine is in my Volkswagen Beetle. Now this video is gonna be two parts. I'm gonna start off by writing out a list and telling you exactly everything to do with this engine. And then after that, I'm gonna show you some clips of what it was like when I was building the engine. Because in my opinion, I like to show information and then provide visuals for said information. So I'm gonna start by making up a parts list for you and going through all the specs. Okay, so that took me a long time to write out. And by no means uh, is this all right. Also, don't judge my spelling. But I, it's been a long time since I built this engine and I don't remember everything 100%, so this might not be 100% correct. But I did my best to go back through my parts list and write this all out for you guys. So to go over this list once again, the more detailed one, we have the 2276cc engine case, which was an original engine case that's been bored out to fit a larger crank. I have dual 94 millimeter Panchito heads, and they have high rev, high rev springs. Uh, I have 5.4 inch forged super race rods, 94 millimeter, I don't know how to pronounce that name, but Mal, probably butchering that, or maybe it's an acronym, I don't know. Uh, big bore pistons, they're also forged. I just didn't feel like writing that down anymore. An 82 millimeter super race crank shaft. I have 28 millimeter ultralight racing lifters, uh, chromoly push rods that I had to cut down to length myself, which was a lot harder than you might think. The camshaft is still the Eagle Racing camshaft, and I have straight cut cam gears. I have a lightweight flywheel, a stage one Kennedy clutch, uh, super stock rocker arms with a 1.25 to 1 ratio, Sidewinder exhaust that's an inch and five eighths in diameter, and my exhaust still has the heater boxes on it because I'm still running with heater channels and I wanted heat to the car. Some people fully delete that, but in my opinion, it's just another way to get heat away from the engine, which is very important. So I left mine on and I usually leave the valves open even if it's hot to let heat in or heat away from the engine. And they're also the dual tip exhaust, which is one of my favorite parts about them because when you have a big exhaust diameter, it's pretty hard to find a dual tip exhaust for cars like this. I also have a Magna Spark distributor, which also has a lot of adjustment. You can put different springs in to also change with play with the timing a little, but again, I'm too scared to touch that sort of stuff, even though I built the engine. But up in the front, I have an electric fuel pump instead of a mechanical one, just because I need a lot of gas and yeah, um, all my fuel and oil lines are braided, even the breather ones. I have, I think they're AN uh, braided fittings from, I got mine from Mopac. So there you go. Um, it was just a very quick list I wanted to whip up. So somebody who wants to build a high performance Beetle engine can also do that. Uh, by no means am I the smartest person for this. I know it may sound like I'm not using the right terminology, but that's just because I always forget my terminology. And yeah, if you buy your stuff from CB Performance, they usually send you the kit that has everything. You build the engine yourself, but you don't have to go through the process of figuring out all the parts that are compatible with each other. Now I'm gonna go over all the uh, pictures I have of how I, when I was building the engine. So this is when we were receiving all the parts and it was pretty exciting actually, because we had all these boxes and uh, as we were opening them up it was crazy there was like so many parts it was so overwhelming there were so many things i don't even know what half of the stuff even did but uh this was during my winter break when i was in high school and we quickly got to work on our bench top we uh, laid out some cardboard to keep our workspace nice and clean and we started laying out our parts and we bought all the right lubricants because it's very specific and um, we started cleaning everything to make sure there's no metal shavings. We were primarily using WD-40 to clean everything, just because we wanted to literally make sure there's no shavings at all inside of any pieces. The first thing we did was we were getting the the camshaft gears and fuel or oil pump gears onto the crankshaft. In order to do that, we had to heat up the gears 
in the oven and then placed them down onto the crankshaft which was an interesting process but it actually ended up working quite well because then once they cooled off they like shrunk right tight onto there the second though slightly curved one took a lot longer but still wasn't that bad and once they were on there it was pretty nice looking and then right after that i got to build the uh the camshaft which comes some i've I heard some are just one piece through like the original ones but my eagle racing one had were two pieces and you it came with three different sets of washers where the hole was slightly moved on each one and it meant that you could uh adjust the timing of the engine. I, I didn't really want to fiddle around with it too much so I just used the like middle normal easiest one because I didn't want to screw it up. But uh, now that we had all of our pieces together we could put them into the engine and we were er, like mock them up in the half case and we could spin the wheel and it was crazy seeing how little the clearance was to everything and how big that crankshaft looked in that looked in that little case then we were once we had the crankshaft in we put the camshaft in and everything was looking good um and then we put the other half of the case onto it just to mock it up we didn't not for sure yet but the reason why we had to put the other half of the case on was because we were uh, checking out the timing of everything just to make sure that our valves were opening and closing at the right time and that our camshaft was in the right position based on the uh, crankshaft. And then um, we, st we started mocking up what the piston heads would look like and the cylinder heads and the push rods just to make sure everything was going to fit on the right way before we like went to put the case together for sure because it's a pretty nerve-wracking process. Doing the final lubrication of everything before putting the case together, that's some graphite lube that we had special for the lifters and cam. And here's the other lube that we had for the main bearings. Oh yeah, here's the shot of after we put the case together and I don't have any pictures of it doing it because it was a very stressful process trying to get the gasket all the way around. And then we had to cover all the holes to make sure we didn't drop anything inside because that would be really bad if we did. And then we quickly got to work to putting the cylinder heads on and then the heads. And uh, after that, we went right onto the rockers, which was a very specific process with a lot of shims involved because the tips of the rockers, you don't actually want them to be in the middle of the valve because you want the rocker to actually spin the valve a little bit so it wears evenly around, which was interesting to learn. But then we got the carburetors on. And with the carburetors on, that's when it really starts to look wonky. And we were mocking up the exhaust because we wanted to see how that was going to work. And as you can see here, it's quite a cool exhaust system. It's, it's literally like my favorite one I've ever seen online. Um, and we started getting more engine tin on. We got the pulley wheels on. And then the final iteration here of the best it was going to look sitting on the stand and it was it was looking pretty sweet it was a very exciting moment to see that engine built up as for all the parts and the amount of horsepower we make that should give us a grand total of 200 horsepower 200 horsepower is directly from the engine that is manufacturer spec for the parts that are in this engine now you lose a lot of power when you go from the engine to the wheels. But since my en engine is so close to my wheels with the transaxle, I like to assume I have somewhere between 175 to 180 horsepower. Except to add on to that, I built this engine and I tuned this engine. And this may or may not have been the first engine I've ever built, which was a pretty aggressive first build. But hey, it worked and I didn't break anything. So because of that, plus me tuning it and everything, it's probably more like 150 horsepower. But on paper, I'm up and around the 180 horsepower range, which is why I state 180 horsepower in all my videos. I could say 200 because that's what manufacturer spec is for the engine, but I'm a modest guy and I don't like getting caught in a lie. And yeah, but in reality, probably down around the 150 horsepower range. So whatever. But thank you everybody for watching this video. Um, I hope this clears some things up about what engine I have in my Beetle and why I make this much power. Um, I am sorry if I butchered any of the spelling or pronunciation of the words on here. Again, I am not a professional at all in what I'm doing. This was my first engine build. Um, 
And even these parts that I stated, I probably stated a couple bits of wrong information because I built this engine two years ago now and I haven't really gone anywhere near it for a long time or any engine to, for that matter. So I was just going through a parts list and some notes to figure all this out again to put it in front of you. Um, the last thing I forgot to say is that because of this engine, I now run 94 octane. And if I can, I go up to, I think there's one gas station around here that goes to like 96 or 98. I try to put that in as much as I can because you want to go with high octane fuel for this. But anyways, thank you so much for watching. And I'm going to make another video about how this engine stays cool because that is a big problem with some big engines like these in an air-cooled engine. So keep an eye out for that. I'll see you in the next video.